How's it going, Jets fans? My name is Alex with my co-host here, Ryan Moran. Today, we want to take a look at three different position battles, maybe two different position battles about this Jets offense heading into training camp. A lot to do with the quarterbacks, running backs. This team has so much depth, young talent. Um, ultimately, they're going to have to make some tough decisions regarding who should be on this roster or maybe who gets sent down to the practice squad. Um, it, it's tough because you know you get you got Brees Hall in the mix now. You got Michael Carter. Obviously, you know Mike White looked pretty good during a, a small sample size of games last year when Zach Wilson was out due to injury. So you know tough decisions. Do you want a veteran quarterback in the room, or do you want a younger guy who can kind of build up to be that long term backup? Um, definitely some interesting conversations to be had, Ryan. But before we dive into it, how do you today, my friend? I'm doing good, Alex. I appreciate it. So when you look at this offense right now, going into training camp. The starting unit is basically set. Obviously, we don't, it's not official yet who's at left tackle between George Fant and Mackay Beckton, but you really know who the personnel is going to be, you know, quarterback, back, receiver, tight end, O line. So, you know, the starting group really looks good on paper. And even the depth, like the interior of the offensive line looks pretty good. Um, obviously, you touched on running back. So there's definitely, you know, a lot to feel good about, but there are still a couple of position battles in terms of depth roles, you know who's going to be the, the lead backup at certain positions, you know, how that really carries out to the final roster and, you know, who's on this team, who ends up, like you said, maybe going to the practice squad or getting released. So there's obviously a lot of key battles. And for me, the first one really starts the back quarterback position between Mike White and Joe Flacco. You obviously saw White in the Bengal game last year, at the beginning of the Colt game, you know, just some of the flashes he was able to, to show, you know, in his first opportunity. And, you know, Joe Flacco obviously played well in that Dolphin game and, you know, you have a veteran leader who's gained a ton of valuable experience that can be beneficial to Zach throughout the season to help him grow. So to me, that's really the first one when you look at, you know, who's going to be the backup there and, you know, it, it, do they keep three quarterbacks really? I mean, a lot of teams nowadays in the NFL, it's it's not very popular, you know, with the way rosters are constructed. So I think there's a chance that all three are on the roster. I think if there was, you know, potential trade, I think you look at Flacco's contract, a lot of it being guaranteed and he just signed it this year. I would think White would probably have more value just based on age, based on upside. So to me, that's really going to be the you know first position battle in terms of depth that's really going to be worth following there at the back quarterback position. Yeah, I mean, there's an argument to be made that having that veteran leadership in the room with Zach Wilson like a Joe Flacco is um, impactful, right? You know, we, we saw Josh McCown with Sam Darnold had a really good relationship. Ultimately, you know, Sam Darnold didn't end up panning out and Josh McCown obviously not no longer on the team, but like they did kind of have a good chemistry situation going on that he did help him a lot. Um, so Joe Flacco having won a Super Bowl and done a lot of interesting things, um, you know, that is, you know, something to be, you know, valued, I guess you could say. And that is what Zach Wilson may need that veteran leadership at the same time. You got, you know, Michael LaFleur, you have Robert Sala, you have these young playmakers and, you know, Joe Flacco may be looking for, a different opportunity when it comes to maybe a starting job down the line. It seems like he's kind of competent being a backup nowadays. Um, but I will tell you this, it, it's, you know, I personally like the younger option in Mike White because I think there's, there's untapped potential there. Um, it's, it's like a guy who, you know, last year, what did he play uh, five or four games? He had almost a thousand passing yards, five touchdowns, eight interceptions. So definitely had some uh, bad throws, but again, he was a rookie um, had a 66.7% completion rate, which is really solid coming out of South Florida and then in Western Kentucky, you know, six foot four, 218 pounds. He's a good player. Like this is a guy was a, a fifth round pick by the Cowboys back in 2018. And when I say rookie, it was his first time actually playing a, an actual NFL game. Um, and, and that I think is valuable because you saw a flash of something. Joe Flacco's, you know, what we have in Joe Flacco, he's going to, offers Zach Wilson a backup that, you know, will give average play. But Mike Way, I think there's something there, like in terms of if, if Zach Wilson were to go down, like you could expect him to at least put in maximum effort. When, at times, Joe Flacco doesn't even look like he cares when he's playing. So, you know, sometimes he'll have like a great game. You're like, okay, where did that come? Other times you're like, this guy looks like he does not want to be here. So, you know, what is your take on Mike Way and, Zach, and um, Joe Flacco? I do I do understand the, the the narrative that having that veteran leadership quarterback behind Zach Wilson may be beneficial. For sure. And I think what you said with White, it's just that long-term potential that he offers you. Like, you know, the Jets, we plan on this thing continuing to build each year. And if you're going to be competitive, you know, throughout the season, you really want to have get, get rid of Mike White this year, you know, when in years down the road, you may not, you know, know who that backup is to Zach, you know, in, the, in a long-term sense. 
So I, I definitely get that, you know, with White being, I still think, like 26 or 27 years old. So you have that going for him. Um, it, but then at the same time, you have people asking those questions. Was it a flash in the pan? Like, was that just a bit of a fluke or, you know, is, is that, you know, really something he can continue to build on moving forward? So it's definitely, you know, an interesting question. And, you know, it'll be worth following here throughout camp, really, to see who's working with that second team and then obviously into the preseason. Yeah, it definitely will. And, you know, a more even interesting position battle was that, you know, RB4 spot. Um, I believe they got Tevin Coleman kind of locked into that RB3. So RB4, Ty Johnson, LaMichael P. Ryan, and Zonovan Knight. Um, LaMichael P. Ryan, probably the odd man out in the situation last year, did not make much of an impact. Um, only had 31 yards rushing on eight attempts. Ty Johnson was a lot more impactful um, with 238 yards rushing, two touchdowns, and two touchdowns receiving as well. And then you have Zonovan Knight coming from North Carolina State, where he had 753 rushing yards last year with three touchdowns um, and a couple of receiving yards to go with it. So, you know, if I was to make a guess right now, I'd say Ty Johnson is probably the leader in that area based on the production last year and his experience in the system. Michael P. Ryan probably gets cut, if not lands on the practice squad, along with Zonovan Knight. Um, so I think they just go with experience here. You got Brees Hall and you got Michael Carter. I don't think they're very much concerned about who the hell their RB4 is. They're probably like, we just want a guy with experience who can come in here and like actually know what they're doing instead of maybe a guy who's going to be like developmental behind the scenes. You got a rookie in Brees Hall and a second year player in Michael Carter. No need to go with even more youth, um, in my opinion. So now what's your thought on that RB, RB4 spot? Who would you prefer to land the job? For sure. So you said it with Brees Hall, Michael Carter, and Tevin Coleman. You're really set with your top three. And I think with Ty Johnson, you see speed. Like you said, the veteran leadership, the experience. I think LaFleur had a good role for him in the passing game last year, getting him the ball in space, letting him showcase that speed. And he has good play strength as well. He's, he's got some size to him. And, you know, with Zonovan Knight, obviously you talk about a guy that it was pretty uh, surprising that he went undrafted and the Jets were able to claim him. Um a guy with some special teams versatility, which I think could definitely help him um, if he were to, you know, overtake Ty Johnson this summer. And with P. Ryan, obviously he was a fourth round pick just two years ago. So he's got that going for him. I think, you know, what he adds to this group is an element of size and a bit more power that the Jets maybe don't have. So I think that's probably the one thing he's got going for him to his advantage. If he's able to, you know, have a strong camp in preseason this summer. And really from there, I mean, just to kind of say the third, you know, battle, like how does this carry out with Nick Bowden, the fullback? And if he's going to be on this roster, are you even going to have enough, you know, roster spots to keep a fourth half back to me is a really even bigger question. So you're looking at two of those guys, you know, not really, unless there's an injury or anything, really not being on this opening day roster. And potentially if they're keeping Nick Bowden to play fullback, you got, you know, potentially Trayvon Wesco as your fourth tight end who can kind of do some things at fullback as well. You know, it, it could really make things interesting if they go with just three or if they keep a fourth half back. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't think fullbacks are entirely necessary in today's NFL. Um, a lot of play action. You, you're not really lining up in those those formations where a fullback, because if you have a fullback, you're pretty much guaranteeing that you're going to be uh, running the ball unless you got Kyle use check like who is just an, uh, an anomaly at the position I would I would actually argue that there's more of a position battle at the back end of the wide receiver core you know Denzel Mims DJ Montgomery uh, Calvin Jackson you got you know Irvin Charles Tariq Black uh, they got a couple good guys there Jeff so Smith. Yeah, Jared Smith. So, you know, what, what happens? I think Denzel Mims has, has the lead probably for looking out beyond Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, Corey Davis, and Braxton Berrios. Um, so what happens with Denzel Mims, Jeff Smith, you know, all these guys that can really push uh, for that wide receiver five spot? Like, you know, some of these guys will probably be option to the uh, practice squad, if not cut outright and then picked up by another team or land on the P squad. Um, you know, who do you think kind of wins that battle there? Because I think Denzel Mims is quickly falling out of favor, but he still has the talent to make an impact. I think he does end up making that spot in the wide receiver five, but Jeff Smith could push him. You know, what are your thoughts there? For sure. So I think the top six are set with Moore, Barrios, Davis, Garrett Wilson. Um, and I, I think Mims and Jeff Smith, just based on talent, based on what they've proven, th there's a lot of unproven commodities right now to that receiver group. So I think you're looking at Mims and Smith really battling for the fifth spot. But ultimately, I do think that both players will be on the roster and that they're going to keep six receivers. Um, I, I agree with you. I think Jeff Smith is a guy that they like a whole lot. You know, he offers some gadget ability. He's got some speed and 
you know, it, it wouldn't shock me if he was the fifth receiver, you know, come week one. Yeah, absolutely, guys. But I'd love to hear your thoughts below on these position battles. If you think that there are any that we missed or what players you think will win out. Uh, so it's going to be fun. This, this training camp is coming up really quick, and there's going to be a lot of news to break down, a lot of stuff to analyze. So we got you guys covered on the daily with that. No problem, as always. Make sure to drop a like and subscription, and we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Jets episode.